I'm Satyajit Bose. I'm a lecturer in discipline at Columbia University School of Continuing Education um, and the Earth Institute. Uh, what you're about to see is a set of lectures on the essentials of mathematics necessary for students who take our Master of Science in Sustainability Management program. This is the first of three sessions. Good evening, everyone. I'm sorry for my state. Uh, I'm a bit of a klutz. And uh, about a week ago, I stepped into a pothole. Uh, so, uh, so this is why nothing is broken and so on. And mostly, it's fine. Um, but it does uh, get me a lot of sympathy, which I otherwise would not have. Um, OK, great. Um, my name is Satyajit Bose. I am a lecturer in the MSSM program, which you're all starting tomorrow, but you're sort of starting today. Um, uh, previous to this, I used to teach in the MPA for Environmental Science and Policy program uh, run by the School of International Affairs. Uh, the MSSM program, in some sense, is an offspring of that MPA in ESP program. Um, and uh, I'll give you a fuller introduction uh, to myself and to my courses tomorrow at orientation. Today, we're going to talk about mathematics. Um, I'd like this uh, to be fairly interactive. This is a large group. but please feel free to shout out questions um, when you don't understand. Um, this is a group that's probably going to be together for a long time, so I'd like you to get to start to feel at home with each other and, and with me. OK. Um, let's see if this is going to work. Wow. OK. So. Um, I put up there a little quote from an essay by Gary Snyder. Anybody knows who Gary Snyder is? Yes. He was a, a beat poet, yes, and also a sort of a, a poet of the deep ecology movement. Um, and this is an essay that he wrote uh, about, um, uh, by the way, you should have received slides for tonight, but I know that some of you certainly did not. Um, so when I get back tom uh, tomorrow, I'll make sure that you all receive these slides. So there's no need to take notes and brush and so on. Um, the, uh, the references in there are actually hyperlinked into the slides, so you'll be able to get to the essay if for some reason you want to actually read the whole essay. But um, uh, so this essay is about um, a time when Gary Snyder was taking a trip in the Australian outback. And um, he's writing about going around on a tour on the back of a pickup truck. Um, and he was with uh, an Aboriginal historian who was telling him various stories about the hills over there and the river that they just passed. He realized that the stories were going very quickly. He could barely make out what was going on in one story before the storyteller started narrating something else. And after about 20 minutes, he realized that the stories were meant to be told while walking, not while driving around in a pickup truck. And they were really the stories by which the recorded memory of that tribe was kept. And they were attached to symbols, certain mountains, certain rivers, and so on. Um, and I tell you the story because uh, this has a link to mathematics, believe it or not. Um, mathematics is not something to be done while uh, driving around in the back of a pickup truck, which is effectively what we're going to be doing today, uh, because we've got nine hours of, uh, of mathematics and statistics and probability um, 
which we really ought to take a couple of years to do. Um, so this is obviously not the way to learn mathematics, um, but that's the nature of our, um, of our culture and civilization, so you have to learn it in nine hours. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is that mathematics is a language for us, for, for our civilization, in the same way that um, in the same way that writing, uh, that remembering stories about particular places might have been for this aboriginal narrator uh, to Gary Snyder. Um, and so many of you may have wondered why it was so important for you to learn mathematics since you're presumably interested in sustainability management and it's not immediately obvious that mathematics is so relevant and today we will be, today and the next couple of days we will be doing uh, things that may not be quite so related. Um, but I want you to remember that it is useful and there will be times, certainly in the next nine hours, figuratively speaking, and also um, if you're taking my economics of sustainability management class in the next 14 weeks where uh, some of the things you learn might seem technical or arcane, but uh, at some point you will find them useful, okay? Um, the other thing is you, you'll need to self-select. So some of you, for some of you, mathematics will not be a problem. Statistics will not be a problem. Uh, and you can safely ignore most of what I say for the next nine hours. Um, but those of you who know that it is a problem and need a revision, you should be working through the problems that are in the primer that was sent out. The primer will cover um, a lot of what I will cover, but not the calculus part. Um, and I'll tell you where to go to do problems there um, in a second. Um, of course, uh, as I've said, uh, you, you're going to need mathematics in order to do sustainability management well. Uh, certainly it's a very important part of economics, but also an important part of uh, quantitative analysis in general and the science courses that you'll need to take as part of the program. Um, in having worked in interdisciplinary fields, for a long time, I found that the intersection between disciplines is always uh, used to intimidate. So, um, for example, uh, when I was studying uh, for my PhD, a, a, an important field was law and economics. Um, uh, you know, so looking at uh, laws uh, looking at the economic foundations of laws. And since economics was a relatively quantitative subject and lawyers tended to eschew mathematics and economics, uh, I found that economists would use mathematics to obfuscate their uh, analysis for lawyers. Um, in the same way, in economics, uh, there were those who were very mathematical and those who were not so mathematical. And so the mathematicians who did economics used mathematics to uh, obfuscate to the economists. So there was this chain of obfuscation um, uh, which often takes place in interdisciplinary work. And it's to break through that chain that it is important for you to uh, learn the disciplines uh, and not be intimidated by them. So the key point of this math camp, but also of the sustainability management program, is to prevent uh, the sort of uh, approach where you read an article and you gloss over the equations, um, or you read um, a policy piece and you ignore the tables or you engage with them only slightly, okay? Um, okay, uh, so here's an example of mystification. You may have seen probably a few days ago, there was an op-ed called Math Lessons for Lockervores. Anybody see that? A couple of people, 
you, you don't have time to read New York Times op-eds anymore. Um, but you can, uh, again, you can link to the, the op-ed and the letters um, uh, from the slides when, once you get them. Um, and you'll see uh, an example of how this is used. Uh, okay, here are the resources that you want to investigate and use if you need them. Obviously, the primer that was sent out. Uh, there is also a math primer at the School of International Affairs where I previously taught, and the link is over there. If you go to that link, uh, there are actually problem sets which you can work through and then you can show the solutions immediately. So I encourage you to actually try to do some of the problems before you s show the solutions. Um, and also there are primers in, um, in most uh, economics textbooks. Those uh, will tend to be more concise and are more appropriate if you already know the material and want a, a quick review. Um, let me give you the outline here. So today we're going to uh, go very slowly. Um, we'll simply talk about functions and equations. Um, this should be high school mathematics, um, so it really should be review for everybody um, and just a way to get those mental processes working again. Um, on Thursday, we're going to attack calculus, and that will be a very dense session. Um, I expect that there may be some students on Thursday who have not met calculus before or are quite rusty on calculus. So um, it'll be quite a lot to cover in one day, um, but uh, we will we'll go through it, and I will certainly, at least figuratively, hold your hand uh, through, through any part that may seem um, obscure. Uh, day three, which is, which is after schools, which, which is after classes start, um, is also going to be quite dense uh, and it'll be the second part of calculus, that is integration, and also probability and statistics. In the primer that went out, you will have covered everything in functions and equations, and uh, a lot of what's in probability and statistics. Uh, there's not much in the primer on calculus, and, and there's a little bit on the statistics, which I'll show you on the third day, which is not actually in the primer also. Uh, the aim in the primer is not to uh, uh, intimidate too much in the summer when you're sitting on the beach. Um, okay, any questions so far? No, okay. Um, today, what we're going to do is talk about functions. Um, Mostly linear functions. We'll talk about systems of equations. Yes. Yes, yes. And can you tell me your name when you. No, I, will n I won't be offering it for the second semester, but um, I am being recorded, so you will have the, um, you'll have the video. We'll talk about linear functions equations, systems of linear equations. We'll talk a little bit about special nonlinear functions that we often use uh, in some of the science classes and in economics. Um, and we'll wrap up by talking about inverse functions and implicit functions. And we'll probably spend quite a bit of time on a couple of examples. Okay. Um, Okay, so what's a function? Um, it's a rule, a rule that assigns an output to an input. Okay. 
So you could think of um, any rule as essentially a function. Um, for example, the function 2x takes any number, an arbitrary number or an arbitrary quantity, x multiplies it by 2 and gives you the output, which is 2x. Okay. Um, given that, if x is equal to 5, then 2x is equal to 10. Right? Everybody feel comfortable with the idea of the function. Right? Um, we owe Leonard Euler, um, who's a name you'll hear many times, for the notion of a function or the mathematical definition of a function. Okay. Um, so an example of a function, um, this, is, this, this was when I taught the math camp last year, so this was fresh. Um, this was in the news last year. It's perhaps less apropos today. But um, so uh, around this time last year, of course, there were uh, – actually maybe even two years ago, there was um, the, the Fed had a program to write checks to large banks that lost money. So you might imagine a policy function that says if a bank loses X dollars, then the Fed will write them a check for two X dollars. Okay, and so that would be a, a function. So any bank which loses X billion will receive 2x billion in, um, in low interest loans. Okay, so you can re represent a function in a tabular way. Uh, so when you see tables, very often you're really seeing a function. You may not see all the points in the domain of that function in a table, uh, but you are seeing an underlying function. In in that table, you'll have a row with inputs and a row with outputs. Remember, the function is just a rule that associates inputs to outputs, okay? Okay. Um, uh, this is probably a little hard to see, um, but let's, uh, okay. So, how many people here have not met the Cartesian plane. Okay, so let's, let's talk briefly about the Cartesian plane. Uh, it is simply a method of graphically displaying uh, two sets of numbers, paired sets of numbers. Okay, so the function, remember, gives me an output for an input. A function is a rule that assigns an output to an input. The Cartesian plane is a way of displaying paired sets of numbers. And we use the Cartesian plane to display the graph of a function. And the graph is constructed by taking as paired points the input and output. We usually think of the x axis as the input, as the metric on which the input is displayed, and the y-axis as the metric on which the output is displayed. So if um, we wanted to display the paired uh, set of numbers 2, 3, we assign the value 2 to the x-axis, so we move 2 squares to the right, and we assign the value 3 to the y-axis, we move 3 units up along the y-axis. So it's the y-axis, the x-axis. Okay, if you, if you didn't know what a Cartesian plane was before, I'm afraid that my explanation probably did not help you, but hopefully uh, it, uh, it reminded you. Um, okay, okay. So here's a graphical representation of the function we just discussed. We have the x-axis, the input, loss amount for the bank. The y-axis, the output. The loan amount received by the bank, given to them by the Federal Reserve. 
we could draw for every potential loss an associated level of load. For example, a loss of five, an associated level of loan of 10. Join all the points together. That would be called a locus. Um, so that is every pair of numbers that satisfies the rule would be the definition of the graph of the function. Okay? Every pair of numbers that satisfies the rule. Um, okay, this of course only works, this Cartesian plane here, the way I've drawn it, only works where you have one input and one output. There, you can imagine a Cartesian plane in many dimensions and we'll talk about that next time when we, um, when we talk about uh, multivariate functions. Okay, um, so let's uh, get through a little bit of notation. Uh, y equals fx, I'm sure you've seen this obviously in the primer so many times, indicates that the variable y is a function f of x. So x is an input and y is an output both x and y are variables, that is, they're concepts that are measurable and can vary. f is the rule that assigns f of x to x. Okay? x, the input variable, also known as the independent variable. y is the output variable, known as the dependent variable. f is the rule now, a common source of confusion is to think of f of x as a function. And this is a common source of confusion because uh, everybody um, makes that confusion. Uh, but note that the rule is actually f. And f of x is actually the output. So f is the rule and f of x is the output because of course y is equal to f of x and y is the output okay and this is a useful distinction to keep in mind when you do calculus because one of the things you'll do is change of variables. Um, and so you want to make sure you understand what's the function and what's uh, the output. Okay. Um, an example function uh, commonly seen, manufacturing cost is often thought of in economics as a function of the quantity produced. And so you'd have C as a function of Q. Um, desired residential square footage as a function of family size, uh, for example. OK. Um, so suppose that I give you the following slightly complicated function in that it is a function of now two variables. Suppose that profit is a function of um, product development and advertising expenditure. And it is 36,000 plus 40x plus 30y plus x times y over 1,000. What's the profit if the firm spends a certain amount on product development, 2,000? $2,000 on product development and a certain amount on advertising, $5,000 on advertising. Okay. Anybody here with a calculator? I don't expect you to do this in your head. Okay. We can, we, uh, we can just do it. We can, we can just do it. Uh, we can work it out. Yes, Richard. Okay, so that's a good question, Richard. The X and Y are separated by a comma. Does, does, anybody, does everybody else know what that 
signifies. Yes, what's your name? Jenny. Jenny. Yeah, so x and y are both input variables. Actually, I, I jumped a step because, of course, here I showed you a function with a single input variable. And here I have a function with two input variables. Um, so my apologies for that jump. Okay. Um, so here, this is the output. Y is not an output. Everybody see that? Okay. okay. So in this example, Y is not an output. F of X comma Y is the output. There are actually two inputs, X and Y. Um, so let's just um, let's just do this. So we've got thirty six thousand plus eighty thousand plus plus x, y, 10 million divided by 1,000. Okay. okay, so that's um, three, no, is it, yeah, so 36, it's got to be 300, right? 150, so it's got, yeah, it's going to be more than, yeah, 90. Oh, 266, yeah, sorry. Yeah, 276,000. Perfect, okay. Um, okay, so everybody see how to apply functions. Simply applying a rule on one or more inputs to get an output. 